side. So this point, I will basically read through what's on the slide because each point is important. So the first thing, when these people come and knock on your door, and uh, with regards to the Trespass Act, which I'll refer to later on, uh, any agency or anybody, whether it's Joe Blow down the street, they have access to your front door. If they knock on your front door and say, can I go do this on your property, you have the right to say, no, get off my property. If you have your property posted with trespassing signs, they are not allowed on your property at all, except to your front door. If you do not have your property posted, you have to give them a warning not to come back on your property. If you do that and then call the police and indicate someone has been trespassing, what do I need to do? They will give you the steps you need to do. But you can't, if you don't have your property posted, you can't stop people from going on your land and let you walk up to them and tell them you need to leave, this is private property. But at that point, you can't charge them with trespass because they had no, no pre-knowledge that they were trespassing. <clears throat> so when an agency shows up, you ask who they are, what they represent, whom do they work for, you check and record any identification that they have. You ask all of them, so if there's five cops there, you ask them for their business cards. If there's five OSPCA there, you ask them all for their business cards. If they don't have cards, and this is important, you ask them to write down and give you their name, rank or position, contact information, and if applicable, badge number. You need to get thorough identification of all the people present, whether police, agency, bylaw, and you need to get thorough identification of any friends that come to support you as well. And that's one of the things in all of this to realize too. Uh, complacency is a bad thing in our society right now. And you have to realize that if you say to your neighbor or your friend that if something happens, I'll be there to support you, that means be there to support them to court. So you have to be prepared to be a witness. You have to be prepared to provide affidavits. So be prepared to go the full length because it doesn't do your friend any good if you're just there on the day and, no, I can't go to court because that doesn't help them. Slide. So once you've established who is there, now you need to establish what they're there for. So what is the purpose of your visit? Is this an inquiry or an investigation? And I'll define those two terms in a moment. Do you have a warrant or do you have a court order? Now. One of the things that's important to realize is that in legal terms, the police themselves, like I'm not talking about other agencies, but the police themselves have a right for inquiry. It may not be anything that you're directly related to, but they have the right to good gain information. And that's basically what an inquiry is, is that they have the right to ask some questions, and if you answer them satisfactorily, then that's the end of it. If they have to move it on to an investigation, then you may see them back again with a warrant to do this, that, or the other thing. So that's the slight distinction between an inquiry and an investigation. And so if they find enough facts in an inquiry that warrants an investigation, then that's the process that will follow. Now, some of the other agencies like the OSPCA is renowned for not having any facts and going on your property anyway and not having warrants and going on your property anyway. And those have, though a lot of those cases have been thrown out with Curtis's help. <clears throat> so what to do if they have no warrant? 
The section, is the, it's called the Trespass Act, RSO 1990. You can Google that and it'll give you the whole Trespass Act and what you can do and can't do. But what you can do simply is you can say, please leave now, your business has been concluded if they have no warrant. And you then indicate that your failure to leave may result in a tort action of trespass being brought against you. If needed, you repeat that three times and then call 911 if they refuse to leave. Now, we have had cases, I'll refer back to the Stefan Malosh case, where he did call the police. The police refused to come. There have been other cases where the police have come with, say, the USPCA, and you would point out something the USPCA was doing that seemed a little bit eh -eh -eh -eh, and they wouldn't do anything about it. So we need, in some cases, we need to start indicating, and that's why you go through the whole identification process, identify who the senior officer is, deal with them only, and they're the ones you bring these concerns to if you aren't getting any relief otherwise, because they do know the law a little better than some of the agencies do. So that concludes the top part of your card or the one side of your card. Next slide. So the shaded portion, which you, oh. the shaded portion is what I'll be dealing with now and that'll be on the back side of your card. <coughs> Next slide. So, if they do have a warrant, you identify the senior peace officer and deal only with them, whether it's OSPCA, MNR, uh, Conservation Authority, you deal with only the senior officer. You ask that the warrant be read aloud by the senior officer so that everyone understands the limits of the warrant. Now, there's no point in the senior officer reading it to you. The whole idea is, is before the OSPCA officers that are involved in the raid start doing whatever they were going to do, you make sure everyone's there in the same location and are listening to what the senior officer is saying. Because then if they're off doing something else, then they can just claim, well, I did what we normally do. So you make sure that everyone is clear what the warrant says. <clears throat> and remember, the police are there to protect you and your rights as well. And so politely remind them. Don't go over the top. Just say, you need to realize you're here to respect and help my rights as well as providing security for whichever agency you're securing. So you check that everyone understands the pre that everyone present understands the limits of the warrant. So say they were coming on to Stefan Malosh's property, uh, he's the house builder guy. If they're coming on to his property, they had to have itemized everything that they were going to remove. If they don't have it itemized, then it doesn't get removed. If they were going on to Mark Tyson's property, they had to have itemized everything in that warrant that they were going to remove. If it wasn't itemized, it doesn't get removed. Same with the OSPCA and their warrants. If they say we're here to pick up two dogs and a cat, that's all they can pick up. If you've got 50 meat birds out in your barn, that means they can't pick them up. They'd like to do it anyway though. <clears throat> So it's critical when there is a warrant present, you make no statements. You sign nothing without your legal counsel being present. You don't invite them inside. Everything and anything you say will be used to bring charges or orders against you. And don't try to explain yourself or your innocence. That doesn't get very far. They're there to gather information. <clears throat> so with a warrant, you can say, I am willing to cooperate but unable to comment until I contact my legal counsel. 
Now, again, they can do what's on the warrant. You have to fully comply with what's on the warrant. So if it says they can pick up your two dogs and a cat, they can pick up two dogs and a cat. Call your lawyer or support immediately, and that's just reiterating what I said earlier, and you do not allow them to go into any structures that are not listed on that warrant. So if they say they're to pick up two dogs and a cat from your garage, that's where they pick up the two dogs and a cat from. If they aren't there and there's no other structures listed on the warrant, they can't pick them up. And this next line I should have actually had uh, in bold letters. You question everything but no, make no comments yourself. If they are doing something that you think the warrant doesn't say they can do, question it. Again, only talk to the senior officer and bring it to their attention. And also ask what legislation applies. If they're in under the OSPCA Act, they should be able to tell you the section and the number that they are dealing with in this case. If they can't, then you have a problem. And again, to reiterate, any statement that you make may be used as evidence against you. So you let them do what's on the warrant, but that's it. So to conclude, the one thing is, above all, is to be safe. And the way you be safe is to have a safety net established. The more eyes that are on site watching what the agency is doing, the less chance there is that they'll try and pull something because they know that these 10 people may show up on the witness stand and say that I did that when in reality, I said I did something else. That is a big stopper for these people. Do not provoke. You will not be safe if you provoke. <clears throat> be smart. Do all your documentation, video, take pictures, whatever. They cannot prevent you from taking pictures. They cannot prevent you from videoing it. They cannot prevent a friend from videoing it if you give that friend explicit uh, a, a permission to do that. And above all, uh, in the case that uh, I was dealing with down east here, after a certain point it becomes fun because there's a lot of things you can write down that they are doing that uh, is not in under any guide or any laws or anything. If you document everything, I can guarantee you that there will be things that they do where they're breaking the own act that they're supposedly administering. And be an Ontario landowner. And in that, I'll say, if you have a couple of landowner signs that's sitting in your closet or in your truck, if they're the magnetic ones that belong on the outside of your vehicle, put them on the outside of your vehicle. If there are a couple of signs that are to be posted on your property, post them at any entrances into your property. And a good other point would be to post it on any boundary corners as well to, to delineate your property. The OSPCA, the conservation authorities have given us verbal commitment that if their signs are, if those signs are posted, that they will not come onto your property unless they come to your front door and ask permission or unless they have a warrant. And just one of the other things that uh, people are not that familiar with under the Trespass Act, it would be expensive to put up a whole bunch of landowner signs as your delineation of your boundary uh, because I, there's a certain distance that each sign has to be from each other. They have to be visible from one sign to the next. And so I forget what the spacing is, but it would be expensive, especially if you've got 100 acres you're trying to delineate. What you can use is a four inch red dot. And so you can put that on a piece of wood or something that'll last a bit of time and you post those on the spacings. 
and that is all that's required to delineate uh, land where there's no trespassing. Anyway, that concludes my presentation. If there's any questions, uh, we can go ahead. If you have a gated property, uh, talk to Nick Vandegrad about that. He can tell you a few stories about having a gated property with a sign on it. Um, a gated property means that they have access to that gate and that's it. If they want to get a hold of you, they have to phone you, whatever. They cannot go through that gate. Um, I, well, I'll tell you what, the case I was dealing with, they weren't very happy about answering questions and they tried everything they could not to answer the questions. And I'm sure that Tom has had that situation and some of the others who've had dealings with different agencies. Uh, they feel that they don't have to answer questions, but certainly uh, by them not being willing to answer questions when you get to court, that doesn't give, put them in a good light at all because it's just the same as you. If you're polite and allow them to do what is on the warrant, if they're nasty, aggressive, bullying, and you document that, it does not look good on them at all. Do you know what the time frame is for, say, if somebody's uh, been abused in this way, uh, uh, somebody's come and cleaned up the property? What's the time frame that you can... Uh, Terry, would you be able to answer that one? Did you hear that? Okay. So if, if any of these things have... Uh, any of these agencies have brought an action against you that you aren't happy with, you have two years to do something back against them. Yes, Joanne. And what about if you're not home and they come on your property or can they? Well, technically they can come onto your property to the front door. If they don't have a warrant, that's all they can do. They are obliged to leave. Um, now, you know as well as I do that there have been cases where they have not done that. Um, uh, that's something I'd have to get clarified, Joanne. Yeah. If they have a warrant, I think you may be stuck that they may have the ability to do what the warrant says. 